Dear students, now we are going to discuss the analysis of series shunt feedback in detail. In series shunt feedback, the first term represents the way of mixing the feedback signal with the input signal. In series mixing, the voltage feedback signal is connected in series with the input signal. Okay. The second term represents the way of sampling the output signal. So here, shunt sampling is nothing but the voltage sampling. The output is a voltage signal. Hence, this series shunt feedback is also known as voltage sampling series mixing feedback topology. Simply voltage series feedback. In this configuration, the sample of the output voltage is connected in series with the input voltage. So here input is a voltage source, output is a voltage and the feedback signal is also a voltage signal. VO is directly proportional to VI. That is output voltage is directly proportional to input voltage. The proportionality constant is AV. That is the gain of this amplifier that is equal to VO by VI. Hence, this configuration acts as voltage amplifier. So, for this voltage amplifier, that input resistance or input impedance is high, output impedance is low. This is the diagram of series and feedback amplifier. The input is a voltage signal. Output is a voltage signal VO. Here we can take this output across this load resistance. The basic voltage amplifier with a gain A is equal to VO by VI. Here VI represents the actual input given to this amplifier. Then the feedback network with a gain beta is equal to VF by VO. Here VF is the feedback voltage signal that is equal to beta into VO. Okay. So we are going to take the samples of the output voltage. It can be done by using shunt sampling method. That is parallel sampling method. It is also called as voltage sampling. The feedback voltage signal can be connected with this input signal in series. Do you all understand? So voltage feedback signal can be connected only in series with the input side. You have to remember that from this diagram, the gain of the amplifier without feedback AV is equal to VO by VI and the feedback factor beta is equal to VF by VO. Next, we are going to discuss the gain of the feedback amplifier. It is the ratio of output voltage to the overall input voltage. It is represented as AVF that is voltage gain with feedback is equal to output voltage to the source voltage. From this diagram, we can understand that the actual input given to this amplifier is equal to source voltage minus feedback voltage. Since we are using negative feedback, we can subtract this feedback signal from the source signal to get the actual input voltage. So here we can write the input voltage to the amplifier is VI that is equal to VS minus VF. We can move this VF to this side as plus. So VS is equal to VI plus VF. This VF can be replaced with the term beta into V naught. Okay. Then this VO output voltage can be replaced with the value AV into VI. As we know that AV is equal to what? VO by VI. From this we can get VO is equal to AV into VI. Then we can take this VI as a common term. Then VS is equal to VI into 1 plus AV beta. VO is equal to what? AV into VI. Then we are going to substitute these two values in this AVF formula. So that is equal to VO by VS. VO can be replaced with AV into VI. VS is equal to VI into 1 plus AV beta. Then we can divide this VI value. Finally, we can get the gain of the amplifier with feedback is equal to AV by 1 plus AV beta. So here the gain is decreased by the factor 1 plus AV beta. 
thereby increasing the stability. Do you all understand? Before going to analyze the input impedance and output impedance, we should understand the concept of small signal equivalent circuit of this series shunt feedback. Here the input signal is the voltage signal. So we can use this voltage source. Here the feedback signal is also a voltage signal that is connected in series with this input signal. Okay. So input source and then the feedback signal both are in series connection. This VF value is nothing but beta into VO. Amplifier can be represented like this. Ri is the input impedance or input resistance for this amplifier. The gain of the amplifier is AB that is multiplied with the input voltage to produce the output voltage. Okay, then RO represents the output impedance which is connected in series with this voltage signal. Do you all understand this? And then the load resistance RL. So this is the small signal equivalent circuit of this series and feedback. Okay. So next we are going to find out the input impedance for this feedback amplifier. The input impedance without feedback that is represented as Ri. Okay. You can see this without feedback. So we can exclude this feedback. If you are going into looking into this side, we can say the Ri value is equal to what? Vi by Ii without feedback. If you are going to include this feedback, we can say the input impedance with feedback Rif is equal to Vs by Ii. Do you all understand this? So here the input impedance without feedback Ri is equal to according to Ohm's law V by I. Correct? V is equal to Ir. R is equal to V by I. The input impedance with feedback RIF is equal to Vs by II. That is the input current. Okay. Next we are going to apply KVL to the input side to get the value of this Vs. So what we are going to do? We are going to apply KVL to this loop. So here Vs is the voltage rise that is equal to sum of voltage drops. So what are the voltage drops here? That is I I into R I correct that is one voltage drop and this V F this is also a voltage drop plus to minus. So after applying KVL to this input side we can get V S is equal to R I into I I plus V F. Do you all understand this concept? So now we can get V S is equal to I I plus R I plus V F. This V F can be replaced with the value beta into V naught. Then V0 can be replaced with the value AV into VI. Then we can write this VI as a II into RI. Do you all understand? V is equal to I into R. Then we can take this II input current into the input impedance as a common term. Then we can get VS is equal to II RI into 1 plus AV beta. Then we are going to move this II that is input current to this side. So Vs by II is equal to Ri into 1 plus AV beta. So Vs by II is what? That is nothing but input impedance with feedback. Finally we can get the input impedance with feedback is equal to input impedance without feedback multiplied with 1 plus AV beta. Thus the input impedance of the series shunt feedback amplifier is increased by the factor 1 plus AV beta. So one condition is satisfied. Here in series shunt feedback topology, the input impedance is increased. Okay. Next we are going to analyze the output impedance. For that we can consider the output equivalent circuit. Okay. For finding out that output impedance, First we have to disconnect that load resistance and the source voltage is equal to zero. So for finding out that output impedance we have to assume two things. One is to disconnect that load resistance and the source input is zero. Okay. So this is the output equivalent circuit with this gain 
RO and RL, we have to disconnect it and make sure that Vs is equal to 0. That is input voltage is 0. Why do we disconnect this load impedance? Okay, because we have to analyze the output impedance with feedback from this point of view. After that, we can include this. So here the output impedance without this load resistance is called as ROEF. With this load resistance ROEF dash. Do you all understand this concept? So for simplification we can disconnect and find it out ROEF. Then get the value of this ROEF dash. The output impedance with feedback is equal to VO by IO. For getting this value we have to apply KVL to this output side okay so here voltage rises output voltage vo that is equal to the sum of voltage drops so here we can say io ro plus av vi we can write the value like this vo is equal to io ro plus av vi as we know that the source voltage is zero here input voltage vi is simply minus vf so we can replace this VI with the value minus VF. Then we can get IO RO minus AV. This VF can be replaced as beta into V naught. Correct? Then we can move this beta into V naught term to this side to make this VO as a common term. So we can get the value as VO plus AV beta VO. This minus becomes plus while moving this side. Okay? is equal to IO or O. VO is a common term. We can take it outside. Then VO into 1 plus AV beta is equal to IO or O. Then we can move this IO to this side as a denominator value and also move this 1 plus AV beta to this side as a denominator value. So here VO by IO is equal to RO by 1 plus AV beta. As we know that VO by IO is nothing but that output impedance with feedback. Finally, the output impedance with feedback is equal to output impedance by 1 plus AV beta. Thus, the output impedance of the series shunt feedback amplifier is decreased by the factor 1 plus AV beta. Do you all understand this? Okay. So, next we are going to get the output impedance with the low resistance value. That is represented as ROF dash. That is nothing but ROF parallel with RL. Because this is the circuit, right? So this is AV, VI. That is in series with this RO. We can get that output impedance ROF at this point. That is connected in parallel with this REL. So this RL is in parallel with this ROF is equal to ROF dash. Okay. So using this parallel connection, we can say ROEF into REL by ROEF plus REL. Then we can substitute the value of ROEF here. So what is the value of ROEF? RO by 1 plus AV beta, this RL divided by RO by 1 plus AV beta plus REL. Okay, then we can take this value 1 plus AV beta as a common one in this denominator for that we can multiply this RL with this 1 plus AV beta. So in the numerator side RO REL by 1 plus AV beta as such. In the denominator we can take RO plus REL multiplied with this 1 plus AV beta divided by 1 plus AV beta. Then we can divide these two values. Then RO F dash is equal to RO REL by RO plus REL into RO AV beta. Multiply this RL inside this. Okay. For further simplification, we are going to divide the numerator and denominator by RO plus REL. Okay. So this term becomes RO by RO RL by RO plus RL divided by this RO plus RL is divided by this value means it becomes 1 plus beta into AV RL by RO plus RL. So we can simplify this term further like this. This RO RL by RO plus RL can be written as RO dash and then 1 plus beta. This whole term can be represented as A capital B. So here this RO dash is nothing but 
the parallel form of RO and RL. Here AV is nothing but small v. Small v represents the gain of that amplifier without RL. Okay. Capital V represents the gain of the amplifier with RL. Okay. This is the answer.